Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Corser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. And welcome into the program. This is your course to retirement with Grand Rapids Resource for a common sense approach to planning for guidance and education on our money and our financial and retirement planning lives. He is Ron Corser, CFP founder at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. Ron, we always appreciate the time that you share with us talking about another important topic today. Yeah, it is an important topic. Well, welcome to everybody to today's show. We're going to be talking about 401k plans. And I know... Most people say, well, I got one or I know everything about it, but we're just going to focus here on the 401k, their employer retirement sponsored plan. And so when I talk about 401ks or 403Bs, 457, all of that, anything through a retirement, an employer's retirement plan, we're really going to just call it all a 401k to, to keep things a bit simple. And I, I welcome everybody today to tune in today's program, either on the website, because it'll be posted there. And you can also see our previous programs when we talked about topics that, that people have told us they're important because they phoned in or else put their name and number in there and we reached out to help them. But our phone number here in the office is 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll reach out to you and get you the information you need or answer any of your questions. So why would we talk about 401ks? Everybody's got one or they think they have one or they used to have one because they're still the primary savings vehicle for most of Americans. It's still what everybody goes to. And yet when we've done reviews with clients or we meet people for the first time, we find that there, there's missing pieces of information on their 401k program. And, and it's missing information, not because somebody's hiding it. It's just that a lot of times there's so much information to talk about that when an, an employee sits down with a plan sponsor, I've been told they usually get about 15 minutes of time. Um, here, we'll move this mutual fund over here and we'll do this other thing with a target fund. They don't get a lot of advice. They don't get a lot of the underneath details that can be really helpful and, and really important so that you don't make mistakes going down the road. Mm -hmm. so we're going to cover those things today. So again, give us a call at 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there, name, how we can reach out to you. We'll get you the information you need so you can make really good financial decisions for you and your family. Ron, I was going to say that even is more input than I've ever received when I had opportunities to participate in the 401k. Most of the time, it was make sure the lines add up to 100%. And that's kind of the last bit of guidance or advice. And I really think that that is the importance and the value of discussing it on this program. And then of what you do there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners is that people don't get a lot of guidance or suggestions or oversight on their 401ks. It's a tool that we have and we try our best to take advantage, but you guys are willing and on often regular frequent occasion provide a professional experienced overview and insight into what your clients should be doing with their 401ks. That is part of the service there that you offer to clients and to radio show listeners is a, a, a look up, a review, a look over of the 401ks that folks have. Yeah, it's an important part of what we do to help our clients and also potential clients. Generally, when people come into our office for the first time, we do what's called a discovery meeting. And it really is just talking about what's important to you. How, what's, what are your values? How important is leaving a legacy for your family? How do you look at investing? You're working very hard to save for retirement. What are the kinds of things you need help with, if, if you need help at all? But it always gets down to what is it you really own in your 401k? And many times, We'll have people say to us, would you take a look at my 401k? And we do that when people try to become clients. We absolutely do that. 
as part of what we do. Why do we do it? Well, we don't get paid for it, do we? Because we don't have the 401k. But it's an important part of the overall financial plan, the overall retirement income plan that we'll create for you, our client. So we need to get involved in it in some fashion and, and give advice depending on what's going on in the world. For example, right now, there's a lot of folks that are really concerned about a major, major correction in the market. <clears throat> half the people on Wall Street think the market's going to go up. The other half think the market's going to go down. Somebody's going to be wrong over the next three months and somebody's going to be right over the next 10 years. We just don't know which is which. But it's important to be able to adjust sometimes our life savings in our retirement accounts that, that focus on what's going on right now. It's easy for advisors to say, don't worry, be happy, stay fully invested, don't make any changes, don't do anything, because the market always comes back. And I agree with that. But the only thing I ever say when I hear that the market always comes back is that, yeah, you just make sure you got to live long enough to see that. So I think it's an important thing that we can provide as a service, even though it's not your money that, and it's not our money. Let's think about that. 401k money, we think of it as our money, but it really belongs to the custodian. So it really isn't our money or my money, but we can help you with making good sound investment decisions, given whatever is available in your 401k or whatever employee employer sponsored plan you're using. So we can help. And if you want some help, you want some second opinion, a new set of eyeballs, maybe to take a look at what you're doing and give you more than a 15 second or 15 minute uh, review, give us a call at 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll reach out to help you. It's important that you take control, particularly in the world we're living in today. Um, I'm not sure how to describe the world we're li living in today, except it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland and Cuckoo World on really bad street drugs, I think, sometimes. So we can give you some help. We can kind of make some sense out of what you're doing. We can try to help you keep, stay on track. So that when that ultimate day comes that you finally say, you know what, I'm going to retire. Uh, you have done everything in preparation for that day. And we can be a resource for you. So give us a call, 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. The number to reach Cornerstone Retirement Partners, your resource, ladies and gentlemen, being that these are one of the most important tools that we have available to us for preparing for retirement, we need some help and assistance from experienced, qualified professionals to make the most of each and every opportunity that we have available to us and, and that each dollar that we work so hard for and then put away for later is doing its job to be there for us later. And again, that's what you will get, the resource, the helpful guidance, the perspective at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. So Ron, when you are helping people by doing a 401k review, or uh, as, as you are taking a look inside of what they have, what are some of the things that you find or discover, or what are some of the questions that people have about them? Well, sometimes the only question they have is, tell me what it, what it is I own. Tell me what I'm doing. Is it okay or is it not okay? And generally, <clears throat> I start off with one of the most positive things that I know of at a 401k comes with the ability to systematically, regularly deposit money into your retirement account. And sometimes the importance of that systematic investing is overlooked. They're taken for granted. But let's think about this. When the stock market's going great guns and prices are going up, generally the, the mutual funds within the stock market, within the 401k, will also go up. So if you're putting in the same amount of money every, every month or every other week, depending on how you do it, when markets are going up, you're buying fewer shares or whatever it is you're invested in. On the other hand, when markets are going down or correcting, 
you're buying more shares of whatever you're invested in. And it's it's really important to understand that it sounds so simple when when I say this or when we say this, but it really is important to understand that one of the real big benefits of a 401k kind of investment, an employer-sponsored plan, is to is to delegate a certain number of dollars out of your paycheck every month to go in, no matter what happens. Over time, it's one of the best ways to build wealth in an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Now, the caveat to this is that when you retire and you're no longer putting money into your retirement plan, but you've created an income plan, probably using, you know, if you're over 59 and a half, uh, some sort of IRA distribution strategy, that dollar cost averaging idea works in reverse when you retire. What do I mean by that? Well, all of a sudden you've taken a fixed number of dollars and transferred them when you retire from your 401k, your employer sponsored plan. Generally, most people put it into an IRA. You're not putting more money into it. Now you start taking money out. And here's the dilemma. Think about this. Remember that when the markets are going up, you're putting in the same amount of money, you're buying fewer shares of whatever you're invested in. When the market goes down, you're buying more shares of whatever you invested in. So when the market goes back up, your portfolio increases that much faster. But in retirement, it's the reverse. You're taking money out of your retirement accounts, an IRA, for example. When the market's going up, that simply means that if you have to sell something within that IRA to provide your cash distribution for that month, uh, you're going to be fine. You're going to have a little more money at the end of the month than you started with. What's the downside? The downside is if the market's going down and you're taking money out of your IRA by having to sell some securities to provide the cash. Well, that's kind of like taking well out of a water uh, taking water out of a well rather that's drying up it will tend to push it down faster so i'm going to digress just for a moment and say well how do we solve this issue ron i have conversations with myself sometimes people say you have a conversation with yourself only because you want good information so <laughs> here we are one of the ways to make sure that you minimize the negative impact of what we may call reverse dollar cost averaging after you're retired is when you set up your retirement income plan to set aside a portion of that just to sit in cash and use that account to provide your monthly withdrawal, your monthly distribution, and allow the rest of your account to either go up when the market goes up or to go down when the market goes down, but you're not gonna be drawing money off of that if the market goes down which means you have a better opportunity to bounce back in the future when, when the market correction is over, which may be three days, three months, or three years. So that's kind of a little nugget. Always set aside money that you're going to be using for your monthly distributions. Keep that in a cash management account in your IRA. Use that account to fund it. And generally what we try to do is encourage people to put anywhere between three months and 12 months it really gets down to whatever somebody's comfortable with uh, into that particular cash account uh, to, to give them what they need. So that's kind of a little nugget on what to do after you're retired. Uh, and the other nugget is just to remember how your 401k, your employer plan works when markets go up or down and you're putting in the same amount of money. Well, Ron, we know that the direction of the money is going to change when we do retire, and therefore we may need a different approach to what investment choices and options we are utilizing. Those that were appropriate as the money was being contributed may not be the most appropriate as money is being distributed. Does that mean that the 401k in essence is is a tool for accumulation, maybe not so well positioned for retirement? The answer to that is mostly yes, not 100%. Uh, 
Well, why do I say that? It is really an accumulation product because we're working, we're putting money into there and we're hoping that year after year after year, it grows more than we put money into it. So that somewhere down the road, we've got a nice bucket of money that we can live off of. But why would I say almost? And and we just ran into this situation with, with a new client of ours. That client is 55. And he was terminated from his employment. And he's got a problem, right? Because you can't take money out of an IRA before 59 and a half without incurring a 10% early withdrawal penalty. But one of the advantages of 401k or something, and it has to be a 401k, 403b kind of plan. One of the advantages to this is that if you're 59 years old and you had what's called a separation from service, we always tell our clients, leave that money, or at least the portion of money there that you're going to need, because that's the money you can draw out of. Yes, you're going to pay tax on it because it's never been taxed. But after 55, when you take money out of a 401k, 403b, now you have to be careful because there's other accounts that are IRAs in nature, and that doesn't apply. But for a 401k, 403b, things like that, you can actually take money out if you just leave it there and not pay the 10% early withdrawal penalty. And, and as a fiduciary, as both Nolan and I, Nolan is our, uh, our manager here, uh, we always encourage people that if that's the situation, don't roll that money over. Leave it in the 401k or 403b plan because it's a source of income for you until such time as you find other work or you hit the lottery and you don't need the money. But it, it gives you a bridge to the next thing that's coming down the road. Again, if you have questions about your 401k, give Ron Corser, CFP, uh, Nolan Gosley, the team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, a call 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. So the lack of oversight and the lack of proactive, specific guidance and advice on, on funds is one thing. Um we like the fact that we have the tool, Ron. It's it's automatic. We make those contributions. But once the dollars are there, we've got to understand some of the function and some of the expectations. One of the big ones is that we are going to capture a company match if we make contributions. This is one of the biggest benefits of 401ks, isn't it? It is. It's free money. A lot of plans uh, will say, well, if you defer 6%, We'll give you a 3% match. So I, I look at that and say, okay, every month I'm going to make 50% on my money. That's pretty significant. It really is. Now, a company match is always at the discretion of the employer. So when times are tough, and it happened in 2008, it happened sometime with some companies over the COVID thing in 2020, they stopped the company match. You can still defer, but they will not match any additional funds. Uh, and there's some rules they have to follow. They just can't willy-nilly decide to do it. There's some really strict rules in, in these employer plans that they have to follow, but they can do that. So it's important to make sure that, from my point of view, you max out whatever it is you have to max out to get everything you need. Now, that may seem like simple advice, but a long time ago in a land far, far away, uh, when I first got into the financial services industry, uh, I was blessed to have a few 401k plans with companies, some small, but one large one in particular. And what was the most interesting part to this for me was that there were people who, number one, wouldn't get into the plan. And it was really difficult to convince them to, to save money, but most of it was, well, they needed the money just for daily expenses. Okay. But that's really short-sighted because what happens when you end up being 62 or 63 or 64 and you haven't put a lot of money away? So that was one issue. The second issue was uh, in 401k plans and 403b plans, you can actually take out loans if they're available, and most plans allow that. You can take out a loan with the money you put in. They generally have to be emergency 
loans. There has to be some significant emergency in your account. So way back in the later part of the 90s, I remember getting a call from one of the HR guys at this large company saying, I got a client here who's got a real emergency. Can I let him take an emergency withdrawal? And I said, yeah, and I explained the rules. And I said, out of curiosity, what's the emergency? And he said, well, it's a pheasant hunting season coming. He needs a new shotgun. <laughs> so I said, if you want to call that an emergency, it's on you. It's not on me. <clears throat> so sometimes that loan provision is, is abused and misused. Um, and the other part is that sometimes people just didn't want to put in enough to, to get the full match. So those are things that go on, and, and it's amazing how it happens. And, and I always feel sorry for people who don't quite understand how important it is for your future to put away as much money as financially feasible so that when you get to that point and you're going to retire, you've got a bucket full of money that you can rely on in addition to Social Security or pension. It's critically important. It really is. And there's one other thing to think about, too, is if you have a 401k or 403b plan that has a Roth option, take a hard look at that. We can help you with that decision. So what is the Roth option? And before we get into it, if so far we've got questions or you've got questions, give us a call at 616-301-2581. 616 616-301-2581. We can go through some of the highlights of your plan and help you make really good decisions on how to maximize the value of that employer-sponsored plan. Give us a call, 616-301-2581, or please go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We will reach out to you and get you what you need to make really great decisions for your financial future. So let's go back to the Roth idea. A lot of plans, not all of them, but a lot of plans have put in the idea that you can have a Roth 401k. How does that work? Number one, the money you're deferring out of your paycheck is the only money that can be used to go into a Roth 401k. The employer part that they put in cannot be put into a Roth 401k. So what you have is a decision there that can be a really important decision. Do I put it into my regular employee contribution, which is tax deferred, or do I put it into a Roth 401k, which loses a tax deferred part of that program? But down the road, that money is going to come out tax free to me. And it's not an easy decision at times to make. Because whatever you defer into the Roth will increase your taxable income. Now, here's something everybody needs to understand. When you get a deferral, let's say you're able to defer $10,000 into the, your company's 401k plan. That doesn't mean you get a net reduction of $10,000 in taxes. It simply means that your adjusted gross income for the year will be reduced by the amount you put into the 401k plan. I've had some people say to me, well, I get a tax deduction on all that money. And I say, yes, you do. But do you understand how it works? And they think they just saved, in this example, $10,000 on taxes, which is true. You're going to still be taxed at maybe a significantly lower amount of taxable income, whatever that, that tax rate is in whatever bracket you're in. So here's the other question. Why would you consider doing that? And it has to be done. We generally help people understand either working with their CPA or our own tax people that what the dimensions are of the decision to put it into an, a tax deferred or after tax account. Let's think this through. We know right now that the federal government is looking for more revenue than they can get their hands on. And, and the government gets revenue primarily through taxation. They, we know that somehow, some way, there's going to be more agents out there looking for tax dollars. We know all of that. So here's the first free nugget. Do not cheat on your tax returns because they're, they're going to be checking all of us. And the second part is understand 
what a Roth account will do to your current tax return, but more importantly, work with an advisor, and we're good at this, who can show you the advantages, potential advantages for you of creating a Roth account within your 401k or 403b account. What that means down the road in terms of managing what you actually will pay in taxes going forward. Critical to know this information. And we can be a great resource for you because we, we counsel our clients all the time on this subject. So if the idea of should I put money into a Roth in my 401k, 403b plan, or just keep tax deferred, we can help you make that decision. So give us a call at 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www.cornerstone.com dash rp.com www.cornerstone dash rp.com put your name information in there we'll reach out to you and get you the information you need to make really good financial decisions for you and your family 616-301-2581 616-301-2581 just a minute left in the segment ron but a uh, quick question is there ever any time where you would suggest not want uh, su suggest that someone not contribute at least enough to capture that match on a four hundred one k if it's available. I can't. I don't recall I've ever made the recommendation not to do it. What I have done is ask a lot of questions of the client. What is it you need? What kind of income do you need on a monthly, weekly, biweekly basis? That's really the key determinant. And then if they say, I can't, I just simply can't afford to fully max out the 401k contributions and all the benefits, then we go through a brief discussion of what that actually means. What is the negative impact on their future life savings going to be if they can't maximize it out? There have been instances because we don't have minimums when it comes to our company. We'll help everybody who wants help. But there have been some instances where they simply couldn't do it, given their current expense level. And I understood that. And I just encouraged them to do whatever they could do to the best of their ability. Uh, and and that's, that's where we leave it. Well, once again, if you need help or assistance, if you would like a trained, qualified professional to help you look over your 401k, make sure that you are doing the right things with it and it is doing the right things for you. Pick up the phone and give Ron Corser CFP a call there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581. That is 616-301-2581. Quick break. We'll be back. We'll discuss more about your 401k and cover a report that Ron has available, 5401k mistakes, common mistakes and oversteps that uh, we see on a regular basis with 401ks. We'll talk about those when we come back here on your course to retirement in just a moment. Back here on your course to retirement with Grand Rapids resource for a common sense approach to planning for our financial investment and retirement future. He is certified financial planning professional, Ron Corser, CFP founder at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. Today, talking about one of the most utilized financial tools, our method for saving for retirement, the 401k or company sponsored retirement savings plan. We're talking about the benefits, the disadvantages, the ins and the outs, the, the pros and cons. And the major fact is that we don't get a lot of proactive individual guidance or advice on what to do with our 401k. So there's obviously some things that we should know. And unfortunately, sometimes some things that we overlook. Now, Ron, as we get into this segment of the program, we certainly want to cover uh, several of the highlights of this report that you have of the 5401k mistakes. But there is an important note that we wanted to start with talking about our opportunities to take control of 401k dollars and possibly position them in ways to better achieve our goals. Yeah, it's, it's a good topic to talk about. And, and the name of the topic to talk about is called an in-service distribution. 
or that's what we call it. Some other, some custodians call it differently, but what it is in a nutshell, it allows you after 59 and a half to move money out of your employer sponsored plan, 401k, 403b into your own IRA account. You don't get out of the plan with the employer. You're still in the plan. You're still able to defer. You're still able to pick up the matching funds, but it allows you to move the money out of that 401k or 403b plan into your own IRA. Now, why would you want to do that? Number one, most 401k plans have very limited selections. They're primarily going to be mutual funds. Uh, some accounts will allow higher income employees to have their own brokerage account in there. But primarily, it's just mutual funds and one account that may be called a cash account or a stable value fund. So you have stock mutual funds, some bond mutual funds in one place where you have some level of security. So by moving it out of that into an IRA, you have a wide world of options to think about and to use. And, and with an advisory firm like ours, which really goes through the whole nine yards, so to speak, we don't have one plan for all 401k rollover guys. Uh, here's our plan. Here's the investment structure. We tailor things to what you want, what you need, what you're comfortable with. But you have a whole whole wide world more of investment options in an IRA account. And you have some, I think, some relief too if you have to take money out of the IRA. It's easier to take a distribution out of that than it is a, a 401k or 403b. So isn't, isn't some, there a mandatory withholding if we take a distribution from a 401k that we can have control and discretion over if it's in an IRA? Isn't that like one of the, the differences if we do we need to take a withdrawal? Yeah, you can take money out of a 401k through a loan. Uh, that's that's how you access the money through a loan. So if, if you needed and, and the loans can be up, you can take up to $50,000. But here's the key, you have to pay it back. And, and you have to agree to, generally in writing, the ability to pay it back systematically, meaning they're gonna take a piece out of your paycheck, every paycheck for five years to pay the money back because you have to pay it back within five years. And that can have some drawbacks and negative unintended consequences if we want to or, or have to change jobs, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's 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 not only really, does it have unintended consequences. It's clumsy. It, it really is. It's a very clumsy. So if you've taken out a loan and you're 62 years old and you get retired from your company on purpose or whatever, uh, and you still have a loan outstanding on your 401k, you, that that comes that becomes a distribution automatically, fully taxable. Whereas if you're doing it with an IRA, you wouldn't have such an onerous result. It would still be taxable money, but you wouldn't be caught unaware of what's going on. So it's important to understand that it's it's a great option for people to consider a, a, an in-service distribution. The way to do it is to check with your HR department. Most companies uh, will allow you to take the full amount out. You still stay in the plan. Some companies limit how much you can take out. It's up to the plan, although the government has said you're allowed to do it all. It really gets down to the plan. So ask your HR department for guidance on this, and, and they can help you. But it's an important way to say, I need more control over my money. I need more control over the things I'm going to invest in. I need more control over the amount of risk I'm taking. And that's really critical. So give us a call if you'd like some help with this decision. And should you do an in-service distribution, give us a call at 616-301-2581. That's 616-301-2581. Or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your name and number in there and we'll get out and, and reach out to you and help you to make really good decisions for you and your family. And, and Ron, not just 59 and a half, although that opportunity exists, even if we are still working for the company and participating and contributing new dollars to the plan, that in-service 
allows us to take control over the existing dollars. But another opportunity, if we're no longer at a company and our 401k is still back there, left behind, kind of orphan, orphaned, another time that we should probably consider uh, taking that and rolling it over and, and taking control, correct? That really is a good idea. Yeah. And not leave orphaned accounts out there. Uh, you know, when it really gets down to it, ladies and gentlemen, this is your money. This is your retirement money. This is your, we can call it a nest egg, a bucket of money, however you want to call it. It's important because it has to give you the income you need in retirement so that you can hold on to your lifestyle and maintain your lifestyle. And that income is over and above any Social Security or pension payment you're going to get. And, and a lot of times, if you take control of your money, you have different investment options that are available to you that could be far better in income providers than just saying, I'm just going to stay with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and not worry about anything. Don't worry, be happy. So there's, there's a lot of things to consider. We're really good at what we do because we don't, we don't ignore the details because sometimes, you know, we've heard the expression, the devil's in the details. Sometimes it really is. And so help, letting us uncover all the things that maybe nobody told you about or you weren't aware of, because face it, when you get a review from the 401k provider and the company you work with maybe have 10 employees, five employees or 5,000 employees, it's very difficult for them to give you the kind of financial planning advice you need so that when you get down to that point in time where you can retire, you know in advance that you have all the income you'll need in retirement so you can retire successfully and maintain your lifestyle. That's critical. That's absolutely critical. Ron, what, what, that. wasn't that one of the big reasons and motivations for 401ks in the first place? I mean, that responsibility that you just outlined there, supporting retirement, being there for us in retirement, that used to be a job and a responsibility taken on by the company themselves through a pension. 401k specifically don't fill that role and, and we're, the company's kind of transferring that responsibility more and more onto our own shoulders as individuals rather than providing us a tool that took care of that responsibility. Yeah, it wasn't kind of. It was absolutely uh, transferring 100% of the risk from the company to the employee. And from a company point of view, that was a great decision, easy to make. Just unload it all. For the employee, it sounded like a good idea, but sometimes we found out that it wasn't the best idea. I still have run into clients that when we get through doing our whole analysis and helping them create retirement income plans, will say to me, I wish I had a pension plan. I wish the company hadn't you know, put a lid on the plan 20 years ago. I'd have so much more money and so I'd be so much better off. So it's a, it's a mixed blessing to have the responsibility and the risk. We can help minimize the impact of risk in your 401k, 403b kinds of income decisions that you're making. But it's really important. It's, it's, it's really important to manage risk. Most of us think we manage our accounts for growth. It's not true. I don't believe that for a minute. We manage it for risk first. What's the sense of losing 50% in your retirement accounts because you're going for all the gusto? And it doesn't make any sense to me. So is there is, is there a difference in how that looks and in how that is managed, Ron? Say that again. Is there a difference there? You said not not necessarily managing it for growth, but managing it for risk. We've always been told that in order to get growth, we have to take risk. So is is that a distinction that we need to better understand the difference in what it means and the approach that we're taking. Absolutely. Uh, when we create retirement income plans for people, it's, there's no way to limit risk. I mean, all of it, to just get rid of all of it. Even if you put all your money in a mattress, what, what's the risk? Number house, one, inflation. House fire, people, burglary. Yeah. yeah, fires, burglaries. So there's risk in anything. The question becomes, how much risk is appropriate to you, the saver, with your life savings? How much risk is appropriate? How much risk can you take on 
and still get what you need. Because the question always is, I need X number of dollars for the rest of my life out of my life savings. Yeah, I can risk it a lot. I can go for the gusto and create an, an income and an investment plan based on high growth, giddy up kind of mutual funds or stocks and things like that. And it works for a while. But the government always makes sure that they get their taxes. The government always makes sure that when they do things, they limit what's going on in the market, which happens now. So you can't be in a situation where you've done everything focused on growth because you need growth. Everybody needs growth with, with no attention to risk. You need risk managed or risk adjusted investment strategies that are unique to you. You know, I'm, I'm not a big risk taker in my own personal life. I'm not. I used to scuba dive. I actually dove with sharks. What a, wow. <laughs> Man, if you ever want me to share some of that with you, come on into the office. I'll show you the tapes and everything. And people say, what? You went to sharks? Are you crazy? At least you're not showing off teeth marks. Man, I'll tell you, it was a rush. <laughs> it was a rush. Uh, so, you know, it, it depends on the kind of risk you want to take why you want to take it. And more importantly, here's a key question everybody needs to ask. How much risk do I really have to take to get my money to do what I want it to do? How much risk do I really have to take to get my money to do what I want it to do? Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to ask that question of us, we can help walk you through the answer to that question that's unique to you. How much risk do you have to take to get what you want? Give us a call at 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in and we'll reach out to you to help you. So the question always is, how much risk do I really have to take to get what I want? Some people like to go, you know, go for the gusto. It's like going into the uh, casino. You can play blackjack, which I've been told gives you the best opportunity to win at about 47%. Or you can play Baccarat or some of those other games that are behind the hidden curtain. Yeah, if you hit it, boy, it's going to be really great. But we all know that if you stay in a casino long enough with all your money, you're going to end up walking out with nothing. So risk management, whether you go to a casino, and how do people manage casino risk? I got my brother who goes all the time with his wife. They say, we know how much we can lose. And I say, how did that work out? He said, well, last time, that's what we lost. We lost exactly <laughs> what we said or set aside we could lose. But they still lost. Whatever's that, in my pocket. Yes. <laughs> that was the fun money. So it's an important question in retirement. You know, how much risk is, is really appropriate for you? Uh, when markets go down like they have this year, we find out that we're not the great risk takers that we thought we were. Mm -hmm. So we can help with that. So give us a call at 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We'll reach out to you and give you what you need the information you need to make really great decisions for your family and your financial future. So Ron, we have talked about some of the things that we should do with 401ks, utilize them, capture the match, continue to monitor them, take control of the funds when we get to opportunities to do so. Those are all of the proactive steps to making the most of our 401ks. You've got a list of the 5401k mistakes, things not to do with the 401k. Um, you want to run through that list, starting off with not participating, just kind of ignoring the fact that we've got this fantastic opportunity. That's probably the top of the list there as far as 401k mistakes. Yeah, I hope when you hear 50 mistakes you can make with your 401k plan or 403b that you just don't turn the radio off and go screaming down the road at 100 miles an hour in your car to get home. There, there, there are a lot of things that can go wrong in life. Some of these are worth noting. One of them is if you can participate in a retirement plan at work, do it. Just flat out do it. Don't question it because 
after about three months, whatever money is being taken out of your paycheck, you're not going to notice. You really are. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and this is one of my own benefits, this is my own hot buttons. If you have a Roth 401k or Roth 403b option, I tell you what, I really believe you ought to take advantage of that and put your employee contributions into that account. Yes, you will increase your taxable income. Yes, you will pay a little more tax. But frankly, it's just, uh, it's more than an opinion. It's a pretty strong idea. The taxes going on down the road, they're going to go up. Income taxes, they're going to go up. So the more money you can put in a bucket that's not going to be taxed, the better off you're going to be when you finally do get to retire. Now, I've had people say, well, they're going to change the rules on Roth accounts. No, they're not. But they will do what I believe they're going to do. It's just my opinion. I believe one day they're going to make an announcement that says, no more Roth accounts. If you have them, use them, but you can't create any new ones going forward. So that's even a greater reason to start Roth investing. You can also invest in Roth accounts outside of your employee-sponsored plan, which is an overlooked savings vehicle at times. If you want to know more about that, give us a call at 616-301-2581. We can go over all the Roth options that you have, how they work, how they might benefit you. But it's my opinion that I think they can benefit just about anybody who wants to put them into their financial plan. So give us a call at 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We will contact you, get you what you need to make great financial decisions. Just pulling a couple off the list that I have noticed here, Ron, uh, number seven on the list, not rebalancing, uh, followed by not consulting with an outside advisor. If we consult with an outside advisor professional, what are they going to tell us about rebalancing? Well, one of the important things about rebalancing, what is that? Let's say you set up a, a, a strategy, an investment strategy in your company retirement plan. You're going to have 70% stock-based portfolio, 25% bonds, 5% in cash, or something else. Now, let's say you have a really good year in the market, and three of the stock investments that you have go up 25%. It's pretty hard to expect them to go up 25% again for next year or the year after. What's likely more to happen will be things that didn't go up in the past year might go up faster. So what you do is you kind of take some winnings off the table. What do I mean by that? You reduce the position that's gotten far over what your allocation strategy says. You sell off the wins and you reposition that into something else that has the potential to go up. So you keep your allocation strategy the same and you're basically harvesting gains, which is a smart thing to do. It's not gonna cost you money, because it's in a tax deferred account, but it allows you to make sure that, you know, things don't go up forever. So if they hit a wall and start to come down, you don't give up some gains. So rebalancing is an important thing to do. Uh, we recommend it at least every six months. Some people do it on a quarterly basis and that's fine. Some do it once a year and that's fine. It's just important to do it. And with a 401k or 403b, some of those plans allow you to automatically rebalance from whatever current strategy you have. So you don't even have to think about it. It's done automatically for you. And it makes great sense. So if this is the kind of help you need evaluating what you own in your employee plan, please give us a call, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Go to our website again, www.cornerstone-rp.com put your information in there, we'll reach out to you and help you. There are a few of these that uh, pertain to the loans that you have been talking about. Taking a loan from your 401k, not paying off a loan from your 401k, leaving a job with an outstanding loan from your 401k. Sounds like loans could potentially get us into maybe more trouble than they're worth, Ron. Loans can be messy. They can really be messy. And you have the ability to take out some loans uh, but ultimately, understand, you have to pay him back. And yes, some, I've heard some people say, well, 
it's like I'm just making a loan to myself when I pay it back. And I guess you can look at it that way, but there's a lot of downside. If you change jobs, if you get separated from your job, if you become disabled and you can no longer continue paying out of your paycheck, uh, that note comes due pretty quickly. I've also heard, Ron, that even though it feels like we're continuing to make contributions, those are actually loan repayments and no new contributions get made until the loan is repaid and paid off. So we're not really making forward progress there. No, we're not. It just is. That's a good point. It is loan repayment. So you can look at that as a contribution if you want, but that's not really what it is. So well, a, a, it's a few, just clumsy. It's clumsy to do it if you can find other sources to, to help you out. I know there are times it can't happen, but try and get some other options available. A couple others on the list here. Staying too safe in your 401k or being too aggressive in your 401k. Both of those potential mistakes. We, we've got to monitor that balance, don't we? We really do. And investing is all about risk management. You know, I know that you don't hear that a lot on Wall Street because Wall Street, and I'm part of Wall Street, Wall Street wants us to go, go, go all the time. If the market goes down, buy more. If the market goes up, buy more. If the market goes sideways, buy more. And I, you know, Wall Street's a, it's the mark, giant marketing machine. But what really is important for people is to understand that if you create an investment strategy and the investment strategy is working, and that strategy always includes how am I going to put my money in different kinds of investments, different securities, different funds, different stocks, whatever you're using. If that strategy is working for you in terms of the amount of risk you have and you're comfortable with it, then always keep in mind that you should rebalance on a regular basis. You should pay attention or at least have somebody like us pay attention to your 401k for you so that you have the opportunity to maintain a certain amount of risk over time without either increasing or decreasing it. And hopefully over time, things balance out because there will be good times in the market and not so good times. Missing the availability of aged-based catch-up allowances. This is the time where we can contribute more to those employer-sponsored retirement accounts, Ron. Yeah, that's really a benefit to old people. <clears throat> you know, and they're always telling us politicians that we want to take care of you old people. And it I used it used to seem old, Ron. I, I'm I'm getting right around there, closer than I I once was. It doesn't seem that old any any longer. This uh, is like I, middle uh, middle uh, age time. That expression that comes from the government, "I want to help you," really scares me. But there is a provision that after you get to be fifty you can put additional funds into the 401k, 403b, or in you have just a regular IRA account somewhere, or a Roth IRA account somewhere, you can put additional funds in. It's a really great way to save because think about it, after 50, the distance between 50 and retirement is fast shrinking. We have fewer and fewer days, fewer and fewer paychecks to deal with. So the more you can put in, the faster you can put it in, assuming you can afford it, the better off you'll be. And then finally, Ron, uh, well, for our program today, again, there are 50 of these uh, items, ladies and gentlemen, on this list, 50 401k mistakes. Give a call, request the list, see if any of them apply to you, but not taking the age-based or 59 and a half opportunity for taking control of your funds. Uh, that is that is a big one. We've talked about it a couple of times, but Ron, a great opportunity to really get ready for retirement. It, it really is. You know, when you have control over your money, you have different options that you can choose to use on a regular basis because the world around us changes. So doesn't it make sense if the world around you has changed, if, if your employment strategy has changed, if, if something's happened to your health, if something's happened in your family situation, doesn't it make sense that you should have the opportunity to make an adjustment to your life savings, that money you work so hard for, to, to line up with where you are today? Because where you are today may be a whole lot different than where you were last year or 10 years ago. So the ability to do in-service distributions 
gives you something that you generally don't have with 401k, 403b, employer-sponsored plans. It gives you a whole new level of control, a whole new level of, of creating investment strategies that meet your current needs and hopefully meet your future needs. But it gives you that wonderful thing, control. Control is a great thing. So give us a call at 616-301-2581. Go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We'll reach out and help you. Again, our phone number is 616-301-2581. Always a pleasure connecting with Ron Corser, CFP founder at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. If you have questions, they are your resource there, ladies and gentlemen. Proactive planners turn to them for investment and financial guidance and advice. Putting that plan together or reviewing and evaluating the current plan that you have in place, the team there can provide you that insight and recommendations on how to best achieve your goals. Pick up the phone, give them a call for that complimentary review and retirement planning strategy session and to get your course to retirement plan designed for you. 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. They're looking forward to hearing from you soon, helping in any way they can. Take care, everybody. Tune into Cornerstone Retirement Partners' full radio program, Your Course to Retirement, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock at News Radio WOOD or visit cornerstone-rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of Your Course to Retirement. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group is solely an indication that the financial advisor has attended training provided by Ed Slot and Company, passed by annual examinations on material covered at conferences and in webinars, and met other membership requirements and does not constitute an endorsement of any kind. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group members pay a fee for the educational programs that allow them to be included in the Ed Slot's Elite IRA IRA Advisor Group. Membership does not guarantee investment success. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the products featured.